You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Folks, um, other people who we don't necessarily think about or impacted by coronavirus. Funeral directors and morticians, they have been forced to adjust protocols in the face of uncertainties about their own safety amid the pandemic, all while preparing the deceased and trying to support mourners saying final goodbyes. Joining us right now is Dr. Harry Close, president of the National Funeral Directors and Morticians Association. Dr. Close, glad to have you on the show. So Thank you. Um, one of the issues y'all are facing is shortage of PPE for funeral homes. Correct. Uh, there's a major, major shortage uh, across the country, uh, but very, very few people think about the last responders, which are funeral directors and the uh, morticians that run the funeral homes. Um, so we have put an initiative together with some uh, physicians, first time healthcare and deaf care working together to try to help the African American community and the Hispanic community. You hear a lot of different. Um, Areas trying to help hot spots, but no one's worrying about the real hot spot, which is the African American and the Hispanic community. And so, uh, so how are state officials responding? Because first of all, you are a licensed uh, industry, and so what are state officials? What are governors? What are members of Congress saying? Uh, we don't. We have not received help from FEMA. Um, some of my colleagues from other communities have but not the areas that are hot spots. Um, I'm happy to be in Maryland. Um, our governor did, I will give him kudos for getting the 550,000 uh, tests from Korea. But one thing is that the funeral directors are not part of those individuals that will be tested. And it has been proven that the African-American, particularly the funeral director as a whole, but the African-American funeral director as well, is the most vulnerable um, of keeping this virus moving since we have to deal with the end result that the first responders would try to help. And when they expire, then funeral directors have to um, address the issue. And uh, very, a very uh, uh, cautious thing. I've lost a couple of family members in the last week or two, and I've lost uh, a couple of colleagues just in New York and New Jersey in the last couple of days. This uh is real, and that's why we're trying to not only get PPEs, protection equipment for the uh, practitioners, but also for our communities. But when this second wave comes, it we have not seen yet. While the governments are opening their doors, um, people going back to uh, the old norm, the new norm needs to keep suit, uh, the distancing and also the mask. Um, it's a scary where my colleagues are. We never have you ever heard of funeral home. Uh, turning away um, a loved one or a family. They're just so overwhelmed in New York and New Jersey. Even here in Maryland, um, uh, we've been busy every day with a service, and that's not a norm for us. All right, and so with with, with that being said, I mean, look, we know the stories of how uh, folks have attended funerals in early Correct. March and coronavirus spread uh, like wildfire. And so uh, yeah. that certainly has to, ha has to freak out your workers, but also you need to understand if a body you're dealing with has coronavirus. Well, that is true. I, I um, uh, since this uh, issue has hit in the last couple of months, I actually have not been traveling. We were an international organization and I did a lot of travel. Um, I had to make sure that my staff is protected. I have a young staff who has children. So every case that's come in the last 60 days, I'm the only one uh, in the operating room with some people say prep room. So I'm putting myself at risk and to protect my staff. And constantly I'm doing a protocol. If we go to a hospital, what PPEs are you using? This is what I expect you to do, the shoe covers. If um, if we have to go make arrangements with someone's home, here's what the protocol will be. Most likely I will go and put myself at risk. So um, the embalmer is really, you know, the person you least want to pay attention to is the one that's actually protecting the public. So what would you estimate your need is? How much PPE? I mean, what do you need? I mean, what are you conveying to public health officials, to elected officials? Well, you know, we look at all of those. I'm, I'm going to say it in two parts. I'm going to say what we're saying as an industry, and then I'm going to narrow it right down to the African-American community. 
um, what the doctors are, are what we're working with, which is say the first time that we ever had the physicians and the nurses and the film directors work together. We're looking technically um, to have uh, uh, on a short span, at least, least over uh, 500,000 pieces. Um, that could be masks, that can be face shields, gloves. Um, some of the items that uh, get us PPE where we're jointing with, with the, you know, uh, uh, the funeral advocacy is working with is had, they have some items that might not reach the standard for physicians that we can at least make sure it reaches the standard for protection in our community. Um, for those of us who are act actually on the front lines at the rear end or the last responders, we need gloves. We need those type of thick gloves like paramedics have. We need uh, gowns and particularly the full hooded suits. Now, some of my colleagues don't use the hood, but just like when you go into an operating room, you need to be fully covered, um, nothing exposed. Um, and I, I have to be honest with you, uh, every funeral director who's been trained, in particular the Obama, should be treating everyone like they're contagious anyway, with all due respect to the listening audience. But now with this virus, it has not been confirmed if even when the person expires, if that virus is ceasing. And so uh, it's very, uh, very important for the, the funeral home to protect, in, particularly individuals down in that prepper area, to cover themselves, protect themselves. Even in my operation, if you are the removal person and you made a removal, I, I expect you to go home, wash your clothes, shower, um, we'll see you the next day. Um, you're not going to track anything you brought from a hospital, from a nursing home, hospice, or any person you pick from a house into this funeral. I have to protect the public who is coming to at least have some type of ritual to um, honor their loved one, even with 10 people in distancing at six feet. All right, then. Well, we certainly, uh, uh, good luck to you, and hopefully um, elected officials are listening to ensure that funeral homes so. are able to get PPE. I, I just want to show you that this is very important to me and uh, I appreciate <laughs> everything you do for us. All right. I appreciate it, Frat Brother. Thanks a bunch. Dr. Harry Close, <laughs> Thank you, President. Man. Thank National you, my Funeral friend. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, thanks a lot. Every single night. We've got some of the top black experts. You're not going to see them on cable news or broadcast news because you swear black people aren't experts when it comes to this health crisis. That's why we have this show and why we do what we do every day on Roland Martin Unfiltered. Joining us right now is retired General Russell Honoré. Uh, thanks to his first black surgeon general, Dr. Jocelyn Elders. John Hope Bryan, he is the founder of Operation Hope. Senator Kamala Harris of California. Dr. Sadrina Calder, retired General Lloyd Austin. Congresswoman Karen Bass, Commissioner Omari Hardick. Bureau President in Brooklyn, Eric Adams. Dr. Joseph Graves, America's Wealth Coach, Deborah Owens. Dr. Corey A. Bear, Patel Salt. Uh, Howard University student, Pastor Jamal Bryant, a uh, doctor, uh, Christy McDowell, Benja Ajilore, senior economist at the Center for American Progress, Gilda Daniels, again, author of the book, The Crisis of Voter Suppression in America. Four stars, uh, General Kit Ward, Dr. Oliver Brooks, is president of the National Medical Association, the president of the American Medical Association, Dr. Patrice Harris, Joby Benjamin, Dr. Alexia Gaffney, infectious disease specialist, Dr. George is Benjamin, uh, executive director of the American, American Public Health Association, Malcolm Nance, family medicine physician Dr. Jen Caudle, Dr. Tashaka Cunningham, a molecular biologist, Kat Stafford. She's a national race and ethnicity reporter for the Associated Press. Dr. Wayne A.I. Frederick, uh, who is the president of Howard University, Congresswoman Yvette Clark uh, from the state of New York, William Springs, AFL-CIO economist, uh, Andrea James, executive director of the National Council for Incarcerated and Formerly Incarcerated Women and Girls. All right, let's go to Capitol Hill. Congressman Gregory Meeks, Congresswoman Interbridge Johnson of Texas, Congresswoman Barbara Lee, Minnesota City. And Amy Klobuchar, mental health clinician, Jamie Singletary, Prince George's County State's Attorney, Aisha Braveboy, as well as Dylan uh, Harry, ACLU Justice Division Strategist. Uh, Dr. Cindy Duke, uh, she is a virologist, Principal Steve Perry of Capital Prep. Health and wellness specialist, Dr. Yolandra Hancock, Desmond Mead, President of the Florida Rights Restoration Coalition, Cliff Albright, who is the co-founder of Black Voters Matter, Michael Harriet with the group, the Mina McWhorter, founder of Love by the Hand of Dr. Julianne Malvo, economist, president, 
he married a bit in college. Coroner Michael Fowler is a mayor of Atlanta, Keisha Lance Bottoms, mental health therapist Suzette Clark. Justin Gibney, attorney and political strategist, and Bishop Vincent Matthews Jr., Dr. Suzette McKinney, CEO and executive director of the Illinois Medical District, Dr. Leon Madugal, president elect of the National Medical Association, Jana Bailey, Mayor of Moss Point, uh, Mississippi, uh, Mario King. We're going to keep driving this thing to make sure our people are fully aware, safe, protected from coronavirus. You're getting the top medical experts, the top business experts, top political experts, top religious experts, because that's why we do what we do unapologetically and unfiltered. Ain't nobody else in the black media space doing what we do. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com.